يقول صلى الله عليه وسلم تكون النبوة فيكم ما شاء الله لها أن تكون Prophethood shall last among you as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes ثم يرفعها الله إذا شاء أن يرفعها then Allah will take it out when he wishes he will raise it away from you when he wishes Al prophethood lasted 23 years ثم تكون خلافة على منهاج النبوة then shall come a خلافة leadership on the path of prophethood through Islam فتكون فيكم ما شاء الله لها أن تكون ثم يرفعها الله إذا شاء أن يرفعها Then Allah shall raise it when he wishes The khilafa took 30 years And it was taken away What comes after that? O oh, Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم يكون ملكا عاضا عاض ما ما يترك بسهولة there shall after that come biting kingdoms biting kingdoms as translated from Arabic means kingdoms that will last for long periods we saw that the Umayyads 130 years, the Abbasis 400 years, and so on. Mulk, Ad. Fayakunu fi kum ma sha Allahu lahu an yakun. It will last among you as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes. Thumma yarfa'uhu Allahu ida sha an yarfa'ah. And it is almost gone from the Muslim land. No long period kingdoms. No more. What is after that? The Prophet of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is describing to us the future. And part of it is the future of Islam. Thumma yakunu mulkan jabriyan. Al-jabr. Al-quwa. Mulk. There shall come after that military kingdoms. Mulkan Jabriyan. Military kingdoms. Jabr Quwa. Military. This is a hadith 1400 years ago. And we see it. فَيَكُونُ فِيكُمْ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَهُ أَنْ يَكُونَ This military kingdoms, these military kingdoms will last among you as long as Allah wishes. ثُمَّ يَرْفَعُهُ اللَّهُ إِذَا شَانِ يَرْفَعَهُ And then Allah shall take it away when He wishes. ثُمَّ تكون خلافة على منهاج النبوة. There shall come after that a خلافة similar to Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali. ثم سكت صلى الله عليه وسلم. And then he kept quiet. Then Allah Rabb al will lift this age up from amidst you. ثُمَّ تَكُونُ مُلْكًا جَبْرِيًّا Then will come a tyrannical rule, an oppressive rule. And it will last amidst you so long as Allah Rabb al wishes it to last. ثُمَّ يَرْفَعُهَا اللَّهُ إِذَا شَاءَ أَنْ يَرْفَعَهَا Then Allah Rabb al will lift up this age. Then what will come after this age of tyranny and oppression? Listen, O Muslims, and glad tidings to you. Then will come the age of the rightly guided Khalif. This rightly guided Khalif is the one about whom 1,050 narrations have come, of which four are Sahih. And the Prophet said, with regards to him, he is famous amidst us as the Mahdi.
And as the earth was filled with wrong and oppression, he will fill it with justice and peace. This righteous ruler, Ali radiallahu anhu says, the Mahdi is from us, from the family of the Prophet. Allah Rabbul Izza will prepare him for the office of leadership in one night. So the Mahdi doesn't know he is the Mahdi until one night. In one night, Allah will transform him. They will make bay'ah to him. And as soon as they have pledged allegiance, two things will happen. Number one, an army will march out from Syria to attack this progeny of the Rasul. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, listen carefully, is in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. And in his sleep, he starts to move. He looks uncomfortable. Then he got up. So she said, Ya Rasulullah, I have seen you do what you normally do not do. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, strange is the situation. An army will come from, the, from Syria, intending the house of Allah from my ummah seeking a man from my progeny to attack him and an army will come campaigning towards the Kaaba until it reached the Bayda and Bayda is an expanse of land between Mecca and Medina flat desert land when it reaches there the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says يَخْصَفُ بِأَوَّلِهِمْ وَآخَرِهِمْ The earth will suck them in their first and their last. And in another قول, one person or a couple of people will be left just to tell the tale. So this is one of the signs that this one is the one the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam intended. So when this happens, realize that this is the one. And the people that realize it initially or the first batch that go towards him is from our lands, from Khurasan. The black flags will rise from the areas of Afghanistan and the flags will come towards him until they come in help of the Mahdi. And his time is a difficult era. Listen carefully Muslims. تَخْزُونَ جَزِيرَةَ الْعَرَبِ فَيَفْتَحُهَا اللَّهِ you will campaign in the Arab Peninsula and Allah will open it. Then there will be a campaign against the Persians. And Allah will open it. Then there will be a campaign against Rome. And Allah will open it. Then the Dajjal will come and Allah will open it as in will let you conquer it. So the age of the Mahdi is an age of intense struggle. And the hadith says, he will stay with you for seven years and maybe eight. And if it really extends nine years. During the battle of Tabuk, when he was in the battle of Tabuk, and his tent was made out of leather. So I sat in front of the tent. The Prophet gave me permission. He said, come in, ya Auf. So Auf came. Prophet said to Auf, O oh, Auf, count six things before judgment will happen. He gave him a prediction. Number one, mawti. My death. Auf said, as soon as I heard that, I was shocked and saddened. SubhanAllah. The first sign of Judgment Day is the death of the Prophet. ﷺ. Number two, he said, Fathu Baytil Maqdis, the conquest of Maqdis. Has that happened? Yes, in Abu Bakr's time. And when he said this, it was impossible to even think of Baytul Maqdis being in Muslim lands. Wallahi, it is one of the biggest miracles of the truth of Islam that our Prophet ﷺ predicted these things and they took place within a year after his death. A year after his death, Baytul Maqdis is conquered. One of the most unexpected historical turns for Western historians is the rise of Islam. It is inexplicable. They cannot explain it. How could a group from their perspective of ragtag Bedouins come and disrupt human civilization, destroy the Sassanid Empire, carve out the Byzantine Empire, create a civilization that was even more glorious than the both of those previous ones combined. They don't understand how that happened. So for us, our Prophet ﷺ said, number two, it will be the conquest of Jerusalem. Number three, a plague that will come amongst you and destroy your children and your wealth and property and it will purify your good deeds. Number four, wealth will be distributed amongst you so much that if a person is given 100 dinars, he would not be happy. The Sahaba were very poor. One dinar was a big deal. A hundred dinars was a fortune to them. And we are now at a time when a hundred dinars is, yeah, okay, no big deal. We're, we're at this time now. Number five, there will be a fitna, a trial that will not leave any of your houses except that it will touch it. 
And then number six, and this is what we're interested in. Number six, there will be a treaty between you and the Romans. And then they will betray you and march against you with 80 banners, under each of which will be 12,000 troops. In other words, 100,000 people. This hadith is in Ibn Majah. Another hadith mentions that you will form a treaty with the Romans and you will fight an enemy common to both of you. Then you will be victorious. And as you are returning back, one of the Romans will raise the cross on a mount and say, this has caused us victory. And a Muslim will get angry and destroy that cross, say Allah has caused us victory. And war will break out and the Romans will break their truce. And then this incident of marching against you will take place. So these are only two or three hadith about this. That's it. But they predict another genre of predictions. And that is, there will be a third enemy. Who is that third enemy? Allahu A'lam. But it's neither the Muslim peoples nor the Europeans. There is another power on the rise. May Allah protect us from all of them as well. But anyway, this Allah knows whether that power will be the actual one. So there will be a third race, a third group of people. You and the Romans will join hands in fighting them. And there will be an alliance between you. And you will be victorious. Once that enemy has gotten rid of, then the Romans will essentially break their treaty with you because of this minor skirmish where a Muslim said, no, it's not the cross and he destroys the cross. And it's between two people, but the Romans will take that as an excuse to destroy the treaty. And they will then attack you. They will march against you with 80 banners. Now, many of our modern scholars say this is, must be a reference to the modern United Nations or whatever. I say, Allahu A'lam. 80 flags on one side. Every flag has a major 10, 12,000 people. That's a major war. So this is another prediction of a great Armageddon that will take place. And Allah knows best. Abu Huraira narrated that the judgment will not come until a room will come out to fight you at a place called A'maq or Dabiq. Now, Dabiq is, and A'maq is close to it, Dabiq is a city in Syria. And the so-called Islamic State took it as its capital and they intentionally fought to get a small city a very mid-sized or small sized city they wanted to capture that city why because it's mentioned in this hadith and we had said a few weeks ago that it is not allowed to do what do you remember I mentioned this very clearly it is not allowed to do what S write a screenplay from the hadith we don't write a Hollywood drama from the hadith it happens, it will happen. We do not extract a drama and enact it. We've seen what happened throughout history when people have attempted to do that. No, we don't do that. It happens, it will happen. But you don't think you are the one who's going to go do that. We have seen time and time again, people have attempted to do that and it has failed miserably. And one of the most important examples, this is another example of ISIS and Dabiq and whatnot. Another example we mentioned is Juhayman and his takeover of the Kaaba. And he thought he would enact all of the hadith that are mentioned, but he couldn't because again, you have to pick and choose just like over here in any way. So the hadith goes on that the Romans will come and fight you at a land called a Dabiq. And the best of the people of earth from the city of Medina will fight, will leave Medina and fight against them. When they are getting ready for war, lining up for war, listen to this very cryptic, the Romans will say to the Muslims, leave us with the group amongst you who have forsaken their religion. We want to fight them. I'll explain. The Muslims will say, La wallahi, we will never leave our brethren and we'll never abandon them to you. I'll finish the hadith and then explain. So the battle will rage on. The battle will rage on. One third of the Muslims will retreat out of cowardice and Allah will never forgive them. When the battle gets tough, they will flee. And the Prophet said they will never be forgiven. One third will be killed and they will be the best of shuhada. They stood their ground, they died martyrs and they will be the best of shuhada and one third will conquer, one third will win, and they will not be tested. Maybe the test of the grave, maybe the test of the akhirah, they will not be tested. Allah will bless them and they will not be tested. And they, meaning that one third, will then conquer Constantinople. 
Again, we'll explain this in a while. It's a long hadith. When they will be dividing their ghanima, after they've hung their swords on the, you know, the, the trees to, to be oiled, then they will hear shaitan cry out that the Dajjal has appeared amongst your children. Thinking it to be true, they will march to fight the Dajjal, but they will find it to be a lie and they will reach Bilad al-Sham, Syria. And when they have lined up to pray Fajr, that is when Isa ibn Maryam will come down after the Dajjal has actually come. And he will then lead the Muslims in war and battle. And when Adu Wallah, the Dajjal sees Isa ibn Maryam, he will melt like salt is dissolved in water. Water. And uh, the Prophet said, if he were to be left in that state, he would die. But Isa will kill him. And the people will see the blood of Dajjal on the weapon of Isa. 